The Book of Numbers Numbers Chapter 1 The Lord spoke to Moses in the tent of meeting in the desert of Sinai on the first day of the second month of the second year, after the Israelites came out of Egypt. He said, Take a census of the whole Israelite community by their clans and families, listing every man by name, one by one. You and Aaron, at a count according to their divisions, all the men in Israel who are twenty years old or more, and able to serve in the army. One man from each tribe, each of them the head of his family, is to help you. These are the names of the men who are to assist you. From Reuben, Eliza, son of Shediah. From Simeon, Shalumiel, son of Zuri Shaddai. From Judah, Nachshon, son of Aminadab. From Issachar, Nathanel, son of Zuah. From Zebulun, Elihab, son of Helon. From the sons of Joseph. From Ephraim, Elishama, son of Amihud. From Manasseh, Gamaliel, son of Padazah. From Benjamin, Abidan, son of Gideoni. From Dan, Ahiza, son of Amishadai. From Asher, Pagiel, son of Okran. From Gad, Eliasaph, son of Duel. From Natali, Ahira, son of Enan. These were the men appointed from the community, the leaders of their ancestral tribes. They were the heads of the clans of Israel. Moses and Aaron took these men whose names had been specified, and they called the whole community together on the first day of the second month. The people registered their ancestry by their clans and families, and the men twenty years old or more were listed by name, one by one, as the Lord commanded Moses. And so he counted them in the desert of Sinai. From the descendants of Reuben, the firstborn son of Israel, all the men twenty years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name, one by one, according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Reuben was forty-six thousand five hundred. From the descendants of Simeon All the men twenty years old or more who were able to serve in the army were counted and listed by name, one by one, according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Simeon was 59,300. From the descendants of Gad, all the men twenty years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name, according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Gad was 45,650. From the descendants of Judah, all the men twenty years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name, according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Judah was 74,600. From the descendants of Issachar, all the men twenty years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name, according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Issachar was 54,400. From the descendants of Zebulun, all the men twenty years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name, according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Zebulun was 57,400. From the sons of Joseph. From the descendants of Ephraim, all the men twenty years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name, according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Ephraim was 40,500. From the descendants of Manasseh, all the men twenty years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name, according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Manasseh was 32,200. From the descendants of Benjamin, all the men twenty years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name, according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Benjamin was 35,400. From the descendants of Dan, 
all the men twenty years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Dan was 62,700. From the descendants of Usher, all the men twenty years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Asher was 41,500. From the descendants of Naphtali, all the men twenty years old or more who were able to serve in the army were listed by name, according to the records of their clans and families. The number from the tribe of Naphtali was 53,400. These were the men counted by Moses and Aaron and the twelve leaders of Israel, each one representing his family. All the Israelites, twenty years old or more, who were able to serve in Israel's army, were counted according to their families. The total number was 603,550. The ancestral tribe of the Levites, however, was not counted along with the others. The Lord had said to Moses, You must not count the tribe of Levi, or include them in the census of the other Israelites. Instead, appoint the Levites to be in charge of the tabernacle of the covenant law over all its furnishings and everything belonging to it. They are to carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings. They are to take care of it and camp round it. Whenever the tabernacle is to move, the Levites are to take it down. And whenever the tabernacle is to be set up, the Levites shall do it. Anyone else who approaches it is to be put to death. The Israelites are to set up their tents by divisions, each of them in their own camp under their standard. The Levites, however, are to set up their tents round the tabernacle of the covenant law, so that my wrath will not fall on the Israelite community. The Levites are to be responsible for the care of the tabernacle of the covenant law. The Israelites did all this just as the Lord commanded Moses. Psalm 47 Clap your hands, all you nations, shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended amidst shouts of joy, the Lord amidst the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, Sing to him a psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the people of the God of Abraham. For the kings of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Proverbs chapter 16 To humans belong the plans of the heart but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. The Lord works out everything to its proper end, even the wicked for a day of disaster. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, He causes their enemies to make peace with them. Better a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. 
The lips of a king speaks as an oracle, and his mouth does not betray justice. Honest scales and balances belong to the Lord. All the weights in the bag are of his making. Kings detest wrongdoing, for a throne is established through righteousness. Kings take pleasure in honest lips. They value the one who speaks what is right. A king's wrath is a messenger of death but the wise will appease it. When a king's face brightens, it means life. His favor is like a rain cloud in spring. How much better to get wisdom than gold, to get insight rather than silver. The highway of the upright avoids evil. Those who guard their ways preserve their lives. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be lowly in spirit along with the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud. Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers, and blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. The wise in heart are called discerning, and gracious words promote instruction. Prudence is a fountain of life to the prudent, but folly brings punishment to fools. The hearts of the wise make their mouths prudent, and their lips promote instruction. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. The appetite of laborers works for them, their hunger drives them on. A scoundrel plots evil, and on their lips it is like a scorching fire. A perverse person stirs up conflict and a gossip separates close friends. A violent person entices their neighbor and leads them down a path that is not good. Whoever winks with their eye is plotting perversity. Whoever purses their lips is bent on evil. Gray hair is a crown of splendor. It is attained in the way of righteousness. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord.